Hey, everybody, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people just like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. The first Tuesday of every month at 1 p.m. Pacific time, we feature Thomas Allen, the owner of California Balsamic Vinegar, and we call it Tuesdays with Thomas because it's Tuesday and his name is Thomas. And each month he does a different flavor of the California balsamic vinegar, which I love. It's my favorite because it's thick and syrupy and reduced, not because of sugar, just because it's less acidity and delicious. And he'll tell you all about how it's made if you like. But what he does is he announces what flavor he's going to use the month before so the viewers can send in recipes. And if your recipe is chosen, you get a, a one or two free bottles. I'm not sure what it is. So this <laughs> month, oh, two, terrific. So this month, because it's the same month that we celebrate George Washington's birthday, he is featuring the flavor Very Cherry. And he's going to be making a Very Cherry Vegan Brownie, a Very Cherry Black Forest Pudding, and a Stuffed acorn squash with quinoa. Please welcome to the show, Thomas Allen. Hi, Chef. Thanks, everybody, for joining us this afternoon. Beautiful downtown Ukiah is beautifully gorgeous today. Sunny and 55 degrees. You got to love that in uh, February. I also want to say Groundhog's Day is my dear, sweet, departed mother's birthday here. So for every, my darling bride, my, my darling mother out there, I always knew when Groundhog's Day was because that was mom's birthday. So we always acknowledge that with my two sisters and my brother uh, to always wish her a happy birthday today. So Aww. all is good. It was Farrah Farrah Fawcett's birthday too. Exactly right. So fun, fun, fun. All right. That's uh, so. Anyway, those are the that's uh, the background here to start off today. Very cherry is the flavor of the month, and uh, we've got three easy recipes that we made both Saturday night and again last night, and they are wonderful. So these are some of my favorites so far that we've done, and I never expected that with cherry balsamic, but it is a good one. So starting off with very cherry vegan brownies by a young lady named Angie Mills, who's a wonderful uh, young lady, and we thank her for the recipe, and you'll be getting your two free bottles, eight ounces. Now, the brownies start off with four large overripe bananas. Make sure they're nice and overripe, lots of spots. One quarter cup of chopped dried cherries. We put in five tablespoons of unsweetened cocoa powder and one tablespoon of very cherry balsamic. Now, start off, of course, preheating the oven to 350 degrees. We lined an eight by four loaf pan with parchment paper. Now, in a big bowl, we mashed up the bananas until they became a puree consistency. Make sure there are no banana chunks in there. Now, you can mash the bananas by hand with a fork or a spoon, but a little bit better is a, we used a hand blender. You can put them in a food processor if you want, but we just found a little hand blender really took, you know, just barely a minute and they were completely mushed up. Now, in that same bowl with the mushed bananas, whisk in the cocoa powder until the batter is completely smooth again, and then also blend in the balsamic vinegar. So you've got your uh, bananas and uh, whisk in the cherries as well, and the balsamic and the cocoa powder all in the bowl blended up beautifully. Now you simply pour that batter into the prepared baking pan on top of the, with the parchment paper in there. Use your spatula to spread it all around because it's so thick, it's not gonna go into the corners. So you've gotta spread it into the corners of your loaf pan. And then with your loaf pan, take it and pop it on the counter three or four times, bang it on the counter that will get out any of the air bubbles that might be in the brownie mixture. So do that and so you're sure that there's no more bubbles in there. And, um, and now you're just gonna simply pop that into the oven. Baking time is anywhere from 20 to 25 minutes. It always depends on how big are the bananas that you're using. Uh, 20 minutes if you use four small bananas, 25 minutes if you use four large ones. Um, when the brownies are done, the surface should look dry and very dark in color. It's pretty close to black. 
the center of the pan should not be too jiggly. It will be a little bit, but not too much. Um, uh, a toothpick that you put into the center will come out wet. So that is okay. And then uh, important part, once you've taken the brownies out, let them cool uh, for a minute. And then once they're cooled down enough, put the pan in the refrigerator for at least one to two hours. You cannot skip that step. If you do, it will be more of a, of, a, of a mush than actual brownie that you can pick up with your fingers and eat it. Now, and what we did, and this is the, um, this is the final step out here, and here's our, uh, the full one here and a couple little ones here that we've done. We actually put a little bit of vegan chocolate chips in it just on the top, uh, just because we wanted to try. Half of it had chips on top, the other half did not. And so we just thought we'd try it with and without just because we can. If you want to put a little bit of nuts in there, that's an option. And, you know, because uh, this is a brownies, you can kind of mix and match with anything you want uh, as topping goes. So that's a super easy recipe with banana out there. There's literally only four ingredients in the entire dish. And it only takes, you know, 30, 35 minutes from very start to clean up and you're done. Uh, and then, of course, you've got to wait a couple hours for them to cool down and set in the pan when they're in the refrigerator. Don't skip that step or you will be severely scolded. Okay. So that's recipe number one. Thank you, Angie Mills. That was a wonderful recipe. We're going to make this frequently. Anytime we've got leftover bananas, it's a crazy easy thing to do. So moving on. Recipe number two comes from a wonderful Chef AJ follower named Ruthie Sater. And she sent us this recipe a couple of days, a week ago. And she has a recipe called Very Cherry Black Forest Pudding. And uh, um, everything is going to go into the blender, into the Vitamix, if you've got one, because that works best. You need, soup, you need it to be a good, strong blender. And Vitamixes are fantastic. So... For the pudding, she used, she said that you can use either raw sunflower seeds, which are a little bit lower in calories, or um, uh, cashews. We use cashews just because we had them on hand. And uh, if you don't have a high speed blender, then you need to soak the seeds or the nuts for at least an hour uh, in your milk mixture just so that they soften up and will blend up easier if you don't have a Vitamix. So that's kind of important. All right. So the, the uh, ingredients called for one cup of cashews, one and a half cups of plant-based milk, one tablespoon of our wonderful very cherry balsamic, a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon, one half teaspoon of vanilla powder. If you don't have vanilla powder, vanilla extract. In our little town of Ukiah, nobody has vanilla powder. And we looked all over for it, so we didn't find it. Chef, where do you get your vanilla powder? I just get it online on Amazon. It's in my Amazon okay. store. It's really good so, if you have a chance. All right. You spoke about that uh, with some other recipe with somebody else in the last couple of weeks, and you said you would never go back to vanilla extract. So we were hoping that we would find it in our stores, in our uh, health food store in town. We did not, so we'll order it uh, on Amazon. So thank you for that. I think in a chocolate recipe, it's less important because chocolate is going to be the primary flavor. But when you're doing something where you really want a vanilla flavor, like a date shake, you know, or a blondie, then I think it's probably more important. Makes perfect sense. Okay. Um, continuing. We're going to uh, add uh, two tablespoons of date syrup and two tablespoons of cocoa powder. All of that is just going to go right into your blender. So everything into the blender and um, pop it on, blend it for about 30, 45 seconds, and then uh, stop it and scrape down the sides because little pieces of nuts will be on the edge around and to put all those uh, scrape them down right into the mix so they are all blended. After about two minutes of high speed blending with that, the pudding part is done. So I mean, this again is ridiculously easy and quick and fast and it's just a it's super, it's just plain old tasty. Now the pudding part is done at that point. Now, 
what um, Ruthie told us was to take uh, some real cute uh, fancy glasses, uh, whether a little parfait glass that you've been collecting. My Darling Bride collects all sorts of wonderful glasses. And so she put in two frozen cherries in the bottom of each glass uh, to have there. Poured uh, enough of the pudding right into each glass and then two more cherries on top of the pudding mixture. And she also put a little bit of uh, coconut, uh, 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 you know, a little shredded coconut in there uh, to make these. Now, what we found was when the cherries, the frozen cherries are thawing out, they'll release some wonderful juice. And I found that when I bit into it, it was just juicy as can be. And the juice, I want to actually cut the cherry in half while it's in the cup to release all that cherry juice into the pudding, which gave it even more flavor. Uh, and if you like, you can always take a little bit more of your very cherry balsamic and just sprinkle just a few drops on top if you want a little extra flavor. Always optional, but I think it's a wonderful idea. So that's how the, the, uh, the, the very cherry pudding, you know, was made. And it's, it's, uh, it's reasonably thick, but it will still jiggle quite a bit here. And it could pour out a little bit. We've had these sitting out for about 15 or 20 minutes. So they're, they're warming up and getting a little bit softer. But in the refrigerator, oh, it's real easy to keep them nice and, and, nice and firm. One thing that I did because we had made both of the brownie recipe and the pudding back to back on the same evening. When the brownies were done, I put a couple of little chunks of the brownie into the pudding just because I could. And oh my I God, you got a cherry wonderful. chocolate speedball. <laughs> it was a little decadent, I will admit, and it's not something I recommend you do, but if you have a special occasion, then it's worth it because it, it, it was really, really tasty. So that's our chocolate uh, pudding, chocolate cherry pudding. So if you have any questions, always, as always, shout out, Chef because that's just super easy to do. Now, um, we're going to continue our, uh, our fun story uh, of our background. And the story continues that when we were in, when I moved to Hawaii, if you've never been to Maui, if you ever do go when the pandemic finally gets over, be sure to spend a day uh, up in Haleakala Crater. Now, uh, the, all the Hawaiian islands are, of course, volcanoes. And on Maui, the, the, the uh, main uh, volcano is called Haleakala, House of the Sun. And you can drive up to the top. It's 10,000 feet. When you get up to the top, it's an extraordinary view of the island. You can see the big island about 65 or 70 miles off in the distance. Uh, but you can also hike down into the volcano uh, cauldron, the crater, and uh, they call those crater hikers. And I've hiked into the crater, oh, probably a half a dozen times over the years. And what you can do inside the crater, it's huge. It's got to be near 15 miles from where you start to the far side of the crater. Uh, and then you can go across, uh, si you can go in and then turn, which, um, so it's about six or seven miles uh, east and west, and uh, almost 15 miles north and south for the crater. And inside the crater, there are three cabins that are owned by the National uh, Forest Service. And you can rent these cabins that are in there and stay for one or two nights. Now, you have to carry everything in. These cabins are as bare as can be. Inside them are 12 bunk beds. Uh, uh, one bunk bed in each corner of the room. It's a one room for bunk beds with a with a, a picnic table in the middle, and then another room with a little mini kitchen that has just uh, uh, wood burning stoves and a few pots and pans. That's all they have there. You have to bring everything in, and you have to take everything out. These cabins cannot be serviced. There's no roads. They only bring wood into there about every two to three weeks. 
And we had the opportunity to hike down into the crater and stay overnight at two of those cabins. And the first cabin was 12 mile hike from where we started. You have to walk from the very top of the volcano into the crater across 12 miles to the cabin. And you're carrying, we had, uh, I was gonna make a great big pot of vegetable potato soup because it was gonna be cold. We're at you know uh, near 9,000 feet. And even though it was in the middle of summer, the evenings were in the you know mid 30 degree mark. And we wanted something hearty to eat that we would uh, you know have a lot of it. So I think we made near two gallons of soup and we had it for four people and we carried everything in and made the soup. Well, as we were making the soup the very first night, we got a knock on the door, which we thought was very unusual because there's so few people in the, in the crater. And this was near five o'clock at night and two people had gotten a little bit lost and they realized that they were not gonna be able to hike out the crater. So they asked if they could spend the night with us as well. And since there were 12 beds inside the, uh, in the cabin, we let them spend the night, had uh, dinner with them. We let them share our soup. And, uh, and the next day, you know, they were full of thanks and see you in the future. I think they were both from Sweden. So they were just tourists walking around and realized that they were in trouble. And there are lava tubes inside the crater as well. You have to know where they are. They're not marked. And it turns out that I took my darling bride Ethel down into one of these lava tubes uh, on our honeymoon. But that's another story. So the crater is a fantastic place to at least go and look at. And if you have the time and the strength to actually hike throughout the crater and that gets you, uh, you can either go out the same way or there's a kind of a back exit as well. But uh, the crater is one of the most beautiful places to uh, see how the earth works. And if you go to the big island, well, you can see one of the volcanoes still spewing out lava, Kilauea. And uh, we would actually, uh, when I went over there and saw that uh, crater and the lava flowing into the ocean uh, near the same time. So anyway, that's the exciting story of uh, hiking through Haleakala Crater on Maui. Okay. Hey, Thomas, I just got to thank Becky Howe for her wonderful, generous Super Chat donation saying, Becky, you rock. I, I, either I rock or you rock. Maybe we both rock. <laughs> and there's some kind comments of uh, somebody that got samples of cucumber and ginger and really liked them. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, Becky, you made three super chats. Oh my God, she made four. That's amazing. Oh my God, five. Thank you. So for six, it keeps coming. <laughs> my chat keeps going. Do I going. hear seven? Yeah. So, so guys, some couple people said the link wasn't working. When just refresh your page because I tested it myself. The link to get the recipes that Thomas is presenting it's already on his website. I checked. And what flavor are we going to have next month? Do you know? Oh, next month is going to be one of our more popular ones combination of both the dill mustard seed so uh dill mustard balsamic will be the march uh uh flavor of the month and when and, do they get uh, need to get the recipes in by oh um anytime in the next two uh at least a week in advance so anytime in the next three weeks uh to send a recipe to orders at californiabalsamic.com or recipes at californiabalsamic.com. Either one works. And we would love to get Ruthie said the dill mustard seed is one of her favorites and she's sending us a recipe next week. So we're excited about that. So thank you, Ruthie, in advance for a recipe that you'll be sending us. So it's, it's, it's so much fun getting recipes from our customers. It's, it's just, we love it. You, you know, I, I mean, I don't need to win, but if you wanted to demo my recipe, I know I did one with dill mustard. I think it was a potato salad a while back. Oh my gosh. We have had so many people comment about your potato salad, which we will make, and I will send you two eight ounce bottles. Yeah. Oh, you and... don't have to, but thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's see, because you know, I, I start to run low sometimes on uh, on on the on the curry, curry which is my favorite. But, but but yeah, teriyaki, but you know what's really getting, I don't know, the smoked hickory lately has been one of my favorites, but you know what I've been doing? And you know what I was thinking, Thomas, you know how like when you go to, I don't know, like I, I hate to use this example, but like a, like a 
7-Eleven or a gas station, you know, people get hot dogs, the way they have the condiments, because they don't want people, you know, touching it. It's sort of like, it, it, it's sort of like a soda machine, you know, how everything is, you know what I'm trying to say, right? Like, it, yeah, you don't, it's uh, little push the little thing and, and the stuff, ketchup right. or mustard comes out at Costco. I, I say exactly. I say this to Charles all the time. If Thomas could invent something for your vinegars, because then they would stay upside down. And I do what I call a speedball. So sometimes I'll I'll be like a little alchemist, and sometimes I'll mix two, three, up to five flavors, and, and just make these incredible like sauces with it. Especially if I'm doing things with an Asian flair, and it's like it's such a pain opening each bottle and doing it. I'm like, wouldn't it be just cool if I could just have like something like that? That's a fantastic idea. And those kind of things are for people who are really hands on can make things. That would be my darling bride, Ethel. She is my little mechanic. If there's something wrong with the car. She checks it out before we take it to a mechanic. She looks to see if she can fix it first. And she's been able to come up with all sorts of wonderful things around the house. So it doesn't honey. have to be the big Take bottles, even the little ones. But I was thinking, gosh, it's, that would be so fun. But it's so fun, especially like with this new ginger. Like the ginger is too strong for me by itself. But like I mix it mm -hmm. with other flavors, you know, like I mix it a little bit with uh, Blazing Habanero, which is Dr. Greger's favorite. I know he just got yep. four bottles of that. So it's just it's fun kind of mixing them. Diane, I don't believe you have to refrigerate them after opening, but I'll have Thomas clarify that. We get, that's one of our uh, most frequently asked questions. Do you have to refrigerate balsamic vinegar? The answer is no. But if you just like cold dressing on your salad, then by all means, it's not going to help it. It's not going to hurt it. So you can refrigerate it if you want to. It gets maybe a little bit thicker uh, in the refrigerator just because it's cold. Uh, our warehouse gets really cold at night. Our low temperatures in Ukiah this time of year often get into the uh, low 30s and we don't have a heater in one of our warehouses where we uh, keep all of our inventory and the bottles get really cold. I mean, I got to think that they're in the 40 degree range, which is basically the temperature of a refrigerator. So um, not necessary to do that. But a young lady yesterday called and said that her bottle of curry seemed to be frozen. And I told her, well, she lived in Minnesota and it was really cold when she got her box and she said two bottles weren't frozen but her curry was and i thought that would be very unusual for one to be uh, frozen in that well it turned out the the uh, curry powder was solidified and i told her to take a little uh, a skewer and stir it up and then shake the bottle back and forth like we always tell people to always shake a bottle back and forth like this to blend it. And she was able, it just uh, the plug of the curry powder made it seem like it was frozen, but it wasn't. Uh -huh. so, hey, Thomas, uh, Deborah says, would Thomas ever be willing to give us a behind the scenes look on how he makes his vinegar? We have thought of that. And yes, we will. Um, we'll take our camera to the warehouse at some point in the future, probably in the summer, because it's just cold this time of year. And uh, we'll show how we make a bucket of the dill mustard seed or the curry or the sweet heat, some of the flavors that are using our fresh ingredients. Um, but just like many of the recipes that we show today with two or three ingredients, dill mustard seed is simply a one pound of mustard powder with a pound and a half of dill put into the, uh, the uh, food processor with a little balsamic and turn to a puree, pour all of that into a bucket and with a long blending handle and a little drill, buzz that bad boy up and that's it, ready to pour. So the simpler, the better. Uh, because uh, it, it, we don't want to do things that have a huge, we don't want to cook anything. Uh, we just want to be able to take our ingredients and puree it or completely uh, macerate it and then into the bucket and blend it and now it's ready to pour. So it's a great idea. We've thought of it many times. And uh, even though my competitors will be, you know, privy to our secrets, there's no secrets for us. It's just high quality ingredients and good balsamic. That's all. So, yeah, but I like the idea. Thank you, Diane.
And so we have a nice comment. Lisa says, I am in love with adding the peach or coconut to club soda, such a refreshing drink. And very cherry is also good because it tastes like cherry soda. And you can use any of the fruit flavored balsamics for soda. Um, I've done many times the combination of both uh, coconut and pineapple, and you've got pina colada balsamic. Uh, a little bit of uh, mashed pineapple in with that as well gives the soda some real substance. Or when fruit is in season, a fresh peach or pear is a wonderful thing to put in. Mash it up first, put it into the glass, a little bit of balsamic, and you're good to go. And that is such a treat to serve to guests, to show them that soda, you know, you don't have to drink soda pop, you know, to enjoy the flavor it's just balsamic vinegar. About a tablespoon for an eight ounce glass is what I think you and I did, Chef, with the uh, lemon balsamic at your house a year and a half ago. Right, if they, do two, they could good. do two if they like it super sweet, but for us, one was enough. Sure. Now, when you made your, um, your uh, the ice, um, the, the, you made the crushed ice, you know, yeah, snow cones. I have the snow cone machine and then the, the, the balsamic vinegar works great instead of using the right. sugary syrup. But just, just always be very careful. Always start out with, a, with less and you can always add more because I, I, when I watched you do that, you probably put a, a tablespoon and a half into a small snow cone. I said, holy crap, that's a lot. <laughs> and, and you had said, oh, this is a little too strong. And you added more ice to it. More ice, yeah, uh, absolutely. <laughs> you, you can always add, but you can't take away. I wouldn't recommend blazing habanero for a beverage though, probably. I would, uh, you know, Gilroy garlic and dill mustard seed. You can do it. It might taste uh, a little funny, but you know, when, when you have a bottle of your own, you can do anything you want with it. So, okay. Finally, our last recipe here is from a very nice young lady. Her name is Chris Norsworthy, and she made an acorn squash with quinoa. Uh, and here's what we did. We took two squash, whether it's acorn or delicata. We couldn't find any delicata. Well, this was the only delicata squash we could find at our local farmer's market. And this was the biggest one he had. So this was just plain old too small. Um, I'm sure that there's some delicata squash. If you're area, if it's a nice big size one, you can use that no problem. Acorns work well. I like kabocha. That's my favorite squash. But now with your uh, squash, cut them uh, lengthwise and for the delicata or just in half for the acorn squash and get all the seeds out. Um, you'll need uh, one cup of red, we use red quinoa, that's my favorite. You can use any quinoa you want, rinse it well. Two cups of sodium-free vegetable broth, one third cup of dried cherries, one quarter teaspoon of freshly cracked black pepper, a tablespoon of very cherry balsamic, two teaspoons of agave syrup, one cup of chopped arugula, one, chopped of, uh, one cup of chopped spinach, and one third cup of chopped almond. Any nuts you want is fine. Now, you place the squash cut side down on a foiled cookie sheet, and you're gonna pop them into a 350 degree oven, cook them anywhere from 40 to 45 minutes, just depends on how big the squash is. Poke them with a fork to see if they're completely done because uh, they want to be nice and tender. Now, while those are cooking, in a medium saucepan, combine the quinoa and the broth, bring it to a boil over medium high heat. Now reduce the heat to low and cover it up and uh, simmer for about 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, uh, stir in the dried cherries and cover and simmer for another uh, two to five minutes until the liquid is absorbed. Now, chef, when you're making quinoa, does it take longer than the standard 15 minutes of well, yours? Uh, I usually make it in the instant pot and it takes about a minute. And then I let it, you have to oh. let it rest though to like it, you can't just open it right away. You kind of have to let it sit for a little bit. We've always found every time we've made quinoa, the recipe says 15 minutes uh, until the liquid is absorbed. And it's often 20 minutes or even a little more. And I just think 
why does it say this? Now, we often heard that you have to rinse it. And I said, okay. And, but we've always found that it just takes five or six minutes longer than what a recipe calls for to cook our quinoa. Uh, still comes out, even though we let it sit in there for a little bit longer. Uh, it still works out, but it's just never the right time. So I don't know if we're doing something wrong or not, but we've been making the quinoa for, you know, uh, five, six, seven years. And, and at least the, it just takes longer. So anyway, um, let's see. Now you've got the, the, um, the pan with the quinoa covered and you're stirred in the, you, you stirred in the dried cherries and now it's, uh, it's all set. Now you're gonna let that stand covered for five more minutes uh, after it's done. You're gonna fluff it with a fork and now your, your quinoa is ready to go. In a large bowl, whisk together the remaining ingredients, the pepper, the balsamic, agave syrup, and then add the quinoa to that big bowl and then you're going to add in the, uh, we chopped up our arugula and spinach. The first time we made it Saturday night, we left the, uh, uh, the spinach whole and it just kind of looked, you know, just all the, the stems of the spinach and whatnot. So on the second time, we chopped them all up and it just made it a little bit easier to uh, blend in and to stuff the, the squash. You gently toss everything to combine all of the ingredients and you simply fill the squash. So this is the squash that we had. And here it's just a lot easier to fill this bad boy up. When the spinach is chopped up, it's just a little bit easier to do. And we always wanna put in a lot because there's no sense in having just a little bit of quinoa stuffing and uh, spinach and so when we did this, we loaded this bad boy up. And we'll be taking these to work to share with everybody. And, uh, and these are just plain old tasty as can be. And next time I make these, I'm going to do it with kabocha. A small kabocha is, is always been my favorite squash. And that's it. And of course, do an extra little teaspoon or so of the cherry balsamic right over the top. And if you want to do a more savory combination, a little sweet heat over the top to finish it is, uh, is the sweet heat is the most popular flavor we do. The Seven Herb Italian is going to overtake it sometime, you know, this summer, because it just hasn't been around as long as the sweet heat has. But that's a flavor that I would put on this uh, and be very, very happy. Yeah, so, I predicted that about the about the Italian. Yep. Oh, you said that from before we introduced it. Yep. <laughs> and I have to say, it became our second best seller within two to three months after it was introduced back in August. By um, probably by November, it was our second best seller. And that is extraordinary. So, Chef. I give you kudos. You are spot on on that. Yeah. Well, because you know why? Because it really is like straight up dressing too for people, mm -hmm. aside from all the other uses. Yeah. And it, uh, it goes so well with your vegetables and as a marinade. When you made that portobello mushroom, uh, marinated portobello mushroom, um, and you just put it on your fry pan and cook that up, I just, uh, I immediately made that. Uh, again, because I just thought that was so good. And so I've been sharing good. your recipe for, uh, well, ever since you did that. Well, thank so, you. And, and I, I talk to, you know, anywhere from 15 to 20 people every day on the phone, whether, whether I need to call them for an address or uh, whatever, or they're calling me. Uh, a lot of first time people, because of your uh, new group that you started, we've had a lot of calls from people in the first time asking, you know, what do I do? How do I do this? And, yeah. and I always, I'm, I, you call me anytime. My personal telephone number is on over a million labels. So when you call, you're calling my phone. So don't call me at 5 a.m. if you're on the East Coast. What if everybody called you at one time? <laughs> then I'll have a lot of messages. <laughs> oh my God. So Jeff says sometimes cherries have oil in them or sugar, dried cherries. And that's true with dried fruit, but Trader Joe's does have dried cherries that have nothing in them but cherries. I just bought some yesterday, actually. Oh, thank you, Chef. Appreciate that tip. So that's a good one. So that's our three uh, recipes for this month. Remember, next month is dill mustard seed. And if you ever go to our site, I will ask this 
from everybody in the future, please leave a review over any flavor that you really enjoy. So when you clicked on the uh, on a picture of one of the flavors, just below the picture, you'll see a little little thing that says review. Click on it and leave a review. And whether it's good or bad, we we lost uh, all of our reviews when we moved from our old website to our new website, and we had fifty. 1500 reviews that were all wiped out and that really broke our hearts because there were lots of wonderful reviews so please uh if you leave a review for whatever flavor you like we would appreciate it yeah so uh, do you want me to do that too i never thought about doing it you may leave a review if you like and, and I that's just on, that's just on your website huh Yes, just on the website. Any every flavor has a little review button underneath the picture uh, on the spot where you'd actually purchase it. And remember, for all you new viewers, uh, anytime you uh, um, put, place an order, tell us what you want for the two free samples. Put Chef AJ in the order notes box, and then tell us what you want for your two free samples, uh, and we will include them every time. Nice. Well, thank you. This was a lot of fun, Thomas. Oh, I forgot. We will be introducing uh, the ginger balsamic. We're, I was planning on introducing it today, but we, the, the uh, label company, uh, has, they're just slow because of COVID. They don't have all their employees. And so we're not going to have our ginger balsamic labels till about the middle of the month. Two weeks from now is pretty close. So we will have our new ginger balsamic on our website in about two weeks. So that'll be fun to have. And there'll be another new flavor in April and then another new flavor in June. Um, so that's fun to have. And then it's, what are we gonna do in the fall? Well, we're not sure yet, but we'll come up with something guaranteed. Nice, well, thanks so much, Thomas. So we look forward to seeing you. Let's see the first of next month. Next month is March. So uh, Neil, you're gonna have a birthday between then and then. Mm -hmm. And let's have everybody call you on your birthday, all 1 million people. The first <laughs> oh, of March, <laughs> it's February 20th. It Can I, am I allowed to say your sure. birthday is? It, it's February, oh, uh, it's 26th of February, right? 27th. Oh, it's a day early. Well, so I'm going to be a day early, February 27th. And March 1st is a Monday. So that's when you will be back on. That'll be terrific. On Tuesday the 2nd then, right? You'll be, no, yeah, that's true. Tuesday the 2nd, you'll be on doing the recipes that viewers submit with Dill Mustard. I can't Dill wait. Dill Mustard. Good. All right. Well, thank, thank you, you, Thomas. Chef. Always very wonderful, Chef. We always appreciate it. Thank oh, you. it's always fun to connect with you. And thank you guys for submitting the wonderful recipes and for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. If you come back in 90 minutes, we have a, another wonderful cooking demo with Erica Nedley, who's written several cookbooks. She is the wife of Dr. Neil Nedley, who's been on the show several times. And she's going to be making lots of recipes, including a grilled polenta with veggies and sausage. And the sausage will be vegan, of course. Thanks again, everyone. And take care, Thomas. Bye-bye. Thanks, Chef.